Hi everybody, at the end of uh, episode 3 we had just found the old drain pipe. Well there's the pipe so there's no surprise on what happened. The pipe rusted out, scoured underneath it, and uh, time took us toll on. Well we found the hole, it's about 5 feet deep. And this is the exit pipe that was put in here a long time ago, and corrosion just took its life on it. Once the corrosion happened, then the water just scoured around the pipe and created this whole issue. So I'm glad we're going to be putting in a uh, plastic pipe. That should eliminate this for a long time. My apologies for my fingers in the camera lens throughout this uh, video. I don't know what I was thinking. Like I said before, this is about five feet deep and what the excavator operator is doing here is cutting the bank back at a slope so it's safe to get down in there and work on this. You'll note that we uh, started digging from the back side of the dike and we're digging towards the water. And we're also using the bucket to help compact uh, some of that ground in there. We'll use a jumping jack later to, to give it a real good compaction. Here's the jumping jack that I was uh, speaking about earlier. That was used to go back and forth and compact that soil uh, very well. Hindsight being what it is, I wish I would have had some bentonite to throw in this soil as we rebuild it. So now it's time to get a transom out and shoot some elevations and determine where that pipe was going to go. I wanted it to fill to a certain level then start using that pipe so it didn't run out on that far end over there to the left. It's what I call the neck of the pond. I wanted to get a couple feet higher there then put the pipe in at that location and the transom allowed us to do that real good. Very well. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if we can prevent it from scouring under there. I'd stick her out a foot. There you go. You okay with that? What's that? You okay with that distance out? I, I think so. I don't think you're going to want it too far out. Otherwise, if you do start mowing the bank, you're going to... Yeah. Let's build it right there. We used the soil that we dug out and we compacted it as we put it in. And we tip that pipe up slowly 
it's tipping down towards the pond a little bit, maybe uh, a quarter of a bubble. So that as the water enters the pipe, it'll have to go uphill just a slight bit before going out the, the other end. Again, I, I wish I had some of that uh, bentonite chips. I would have put that in around this soil, mixed it into the soil, compacted it around that pipe. You can also see we took some of that uh, gumbo out of there, uh, out of the pond, and put that around the entry point of the uh, pipe. Like I said before, we, we haven't done this before, but I think the methods and the uh, common sense that, that we're using, I think this should work and uh, meet our expectations. Now while I had the excavator here, I asked him to take up a stump for me that I couldn't get with my 1025. And I've taken a couple of minutes out of this and edited it so it'd be shorter. But watch the roots on this when this stump finally comes out. Long tapering roots, you know they're looking for water. Look at the roots on this thing. Fiberish, tapering, skinny, you know they were looking for water. Probably not a good idea to have trees on the dike, is it? We continue to dig out some uh, gumbo and muck out of the northwest corner of the pond. Here's another look at the uh, completed project of the drain pipe. Now later I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut that off, put a 90 on it and get it down. That dike is probably 20 feet high from the bottom, the back side of that dike. So I want to deliver the water down the bottom of it uh, under control. Well, that's going to end this episode. Join me on the next episode as we move to the left of that machine and work on that west bank and get that all cleaned up during the next episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. In this video, I wanted to show you some uh, birds that hang around my property. The, um, the most unusual ones here are a couple of eagles that we have. They stay here uh, year round. Uh, here's, here's some pictures of them out the other day. Uh, it was zero degrees out and some light snow. And uh, later that night it was going to be 16 below here. But uh, they stay here uh, again, like I say, year after year. They're pretty cool and uh, they're within a, 100, 120 feet of the house all the time.